Hello everyone, my name is William and I'm a Stratasys Application Engineer for Go Engineer. Today I'm going to show you a couple support modification features on Insight. The first thing I want to show you is how to modify your support base. The reason we do this is to prevent warping or curling on your parts. This can happen if your parts are very long and flat. So if you have a part like this, it's always good practice to modify your support base. So let's take a look at this part here and as you can see it's pretty large and flat. So I'm going to slice the part and I'm also going to add supports so you can see the support base and that's this area right here. So to modify that we need to go to our support tab, select setup, and this is the support parameters button. And under the base settings we're going to modify two things, base oversize and base layers. So the first thing I'm going to do is increase the base oversize. This is the distance between the part and the edge of the support base. So I'm in top view right now so you can see this distance change once I regenerate. And as you can see the distance has now changed. And this can help prevent curling or warping in your part. So although this helps, we're not done yet. The next thing I want to do is increase the base layers. And the reason we do this is to add more mass under the part to keep it from warping. So I'm going to go back to my parameters and I'm going to increase the number of base layers. Now you don't want to just double it because this does add time to your build. For this part I'm just going to add two more. and I'm going to regenerate so you can see that we now have seven base layers. And as you can see the base has been fully modified. Another thing you can do to prevent warping or curling is to print in sparse or double dense sparse. These interior fills allow more heat to pass through the part and that helps keep the bottom from warping. So the next thing I want to show you is how to swap support towers to model material. This is a very effective time saving technique and there are two ways to do it. The automatic way and the manual way. The automatic way is new to Insight and all it involves is a checkbox. So if I want to swap these towers using the automatic method, I need to go to my support tab, setup, open the support parameters, and under support style there's a feature called use model material where possible. So I'm going to check that box and I'm going to regenerate my supports and right now you'll notice that the support towers have been swapped to model material. And you can always confirm this by adding toolpaths and paging up and down through the layers. So obviously model material will be green and support material will be blue. And as you can see those towers have been swapped to model material. So for this type of part the automatic method works great but if you're going to have a part that's going to have internal support you need to use the manual method. And this method involves making a custom group. So let's take a look at this part here and I'm going to slice it and this part has an internal cavity in this area right here. So if we use the automatic method, there's going to be model material trapped inside this cavity. And just to confirm this, I'm going to go to support, setup, and I'm going to use the automatic method. So that you get a better view, I need to hide the model curves. And for that, I'll go to view, hide curves, and using my selection tools and selecting by color, I'm going to select all the red curves, which are the model curves, and I'm going to hide those. And I'll go to front view just to show you that there will be model material trapped inside that cavity. This means the automatic method will not work for this particular part. So for this part, I want to use the manual method, but before I do that, I want to bring back my model curves. I also want to go to support, setup. I want to uncheck this box. I want to delete the old supports and I want to regenerate new supports. So basically I want to start from scratch. So to swap the towers manually we need to make a custom group. For that we need to go to our toolpaths menu, custom groups, and we need to make a new group. I like to change the name of the group to model swap. And we also need to select a template. We do this to tell the machine what kind of fill we want for the custom group. And since we want it to fill like sparse support, we need to make sure we select that template. Also, we need to make sure that our toolpath material is changed to model. So the main reason we want to use the manual method is because we don't want to swap the material inside the cavity. 
we want to leave that as support so that when we put it in the tank, the water can get in through these areas and dissolve that support. Everything else here we can swap to model material. So the first step is to add all of the sparse support to the custom group. We can do this using our selection filters. Sparse support is dark gray in color. Nothing else on Insight is that color. We can only swap sparse support. If we swap any other support type, it'll affect our surface finish. So let's go ahead and add these layers to the group. And as you can see, they've now been added to this custom group. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is manually remove the layers in the cavity from the custom group. Again, we don't want that area to be model material because then we won't be able to remove it from the part. So to do this, I need to go to front view, and I also need to go to view, hide curves. I need to hide a few things. First, I need to hide my model curves. Next, I need to hide my support face curves, which are light green. And finally, I need to hide my regular support curves, which are light yellow. The reason you want to do this is so that you don't accidentally grab something you don't want to. Okay, so now I can zoom into the cavity and manually remove these layers from the group. So let's go ahead and go to our toolpaths menu and back to custom groups and I'm going to manually remove these from the group. And notice how now that area is back to sparse support. Now I can go back to view hide curves and bring back all my model curves and as you can see we have successfully swapped the support towers without having any internal model material. Okay so just to give you an idea of how much time we can save by using this technique I went ahead and processed the part using default supports. And as you can see, I got a 4 hour and 32 minute build. So let's see what the modified part gives us. So I'm going to go ahead and add toolpaths. And I'm also going to run a time estimate. And let's see what we get. And as you can see, we get a 2 hour and 25 minute build, which is a little over 50% build time reduction. Okay everyone, that's the end of my tutorial. Thank you for watching.